And now, a fireside chat with Arthur Bergeron. Hi, and welcome to this installment of um, Fireside Chats. Uh, I do these Fireside Chats to supplement the usual presentations that I do at the senior centers uh, in this area. The purpose is to really answer the kind of specific questions that I often get from clients uh, regarding their own individual situations. And it's to, to supplement the, the presentations at the senior centers. So um, I try to structure this as a call-in show, and I think I hear a call coming in right now. Mr. Bergeron, this is Mary. Mary, Mary, I haven't talked to you for a while. How have you been? Unfortunately, not so good. I just got some bad news. My sister has been a widow now for some time. She fell down last month and broke her hip. Now it seems she may be stuck living in a nursing home. What should she do? Um, so I'm sorry to hear about your sister, Evelyn. And um, she should do some things. Uh, obviously, the bad news is if she's going to be in a nursing home for the rest of her life, well, that's bad in and of itself. Um, but since Medicare won't cover more than 100 days worth of nursing home care, once those 100 days are over, um, she will be need to be paying for that nursing home privately unless she can qualify for Mass Health, which is the Massachusetts name for the Medicaid program. And that nursing home care typically is going to cost her about $12,000 a month or about $150,000 a year. That is the bad news. Um, the good news is that she can qualify for Mass Health. Um, pretty much no matter what her asset situation is, it seems to me that, uh, well, I'll just give you an example. Say, say, that, say that Mary has assets of uh, $450,000 at this point. Um, if, if, if she were paying privately for nursing home care, all of those assets will be exhausted after uh, three years, $150,000 a year for three years. We'll pick up, we'll end up, she'll end up paying out all $450,000. Um, if she qualifies for Mass Health, then um, sh she would derive, and her kids after her would derive a significant benefit. And the reason is because once she has qualified for Mass Health, um, the Mass Health cost of that nursing home, that same nursing home bed, and that same nursing home, which was twelve thousand dollars a month on private pay, will go down to about seven thousand dollars a month. So by qualifying for Mass Health, she can basically reduce the cost of her nursing home stay from $12,000 a month uh, to $7,000 a month or save about $5,000 a month or about $60,000 per year. So the way that she can do that is by taking her assets and restructuring them. First of all, if she owns her home, say that she owns a home and, uh, and the home is whatever the home is worth. Uh, if she owns a home and has no other assets, then she can immediately qualify for Mass Health because the home is not a countable asset. Uh, if she ha Mass Health will put a lien on that home in order to get reimbursed following her death for whatever they paid. But Mass Health, remember, the Mass Health rate on that nursing home bed is that much lower rate. Therefore, the amount of the lien is going to be much smaller than the amount that, she married, that, your, that Evelyn would have paid if she had been on private pay. But suppose that she doesn't have a home. Suppose she sold her home and all she has is a large pile of cash. Say she has $450,000 in cash. Well, um, that cash would get used up at the rate of uh, $150,000 a year, about $12,000 a month, about $150,000 a year. So it'll get, all get used up over um, three years. If, on the other hand, uh, Mary qualifies for Mass Health, the Mass Health rate for that nursing home bed is only about $7,000 a month or about $84,000 a year. So she ends up saving a tremendous amount of money. Um, so she can qualify for Mass Health by doing um, two things. One, uh, she can use some of her money to buy an annuity. As long as that annuity calls for equal monthly payments over a term that is shorter than Mary's, than uh, Evelyn's actuarial life expectancy, the purchase of that annuity in any amount is a legitimate conversion from a countable asset to an uncountable income stream. So the day after Mary, or the day after Evelyn buys that annuity, say she took all $450,000 and used it to buy an annuity, um, the day after she bought that annuity, then she could qualify for Mass Health. Now Mass Health would then include those annuity payments together with her Social Security and other income in her income, so that money would all get paid to the nursing home every month. 
but the effect of having qualified for Mass Health is that the nursing home bill would only be seven thousand dollars per month. So, to the extent that Matt, that say the annuity plus your social security check was say five thousand dollars a month, Mass Health would pay the remaining two thousand dollars a month, and the and the lien that would have to be paid following Mary's death would only be accruing at the rate of two thousand dollars a month, or about twenty four thousand dollars a year. So Mary would end up saving a substantial amount, and Mary's kids would by restructuring that way. A second possibility is that Mary could take any of that amount, uh, any of her assets, and, use, and, and, and put the money in a so-called D4C pooled trust. Uh, that's a pretty obscure term, and if you want to learn more about it, you can um, Google pooled trust, P-O-O-L-E-D, trust. The way these work uh, is there are four, or excuse me, there are five pooled trusts in Massachusetts, all oper each operated by a nonprofit whose purpose is to do things for the benefit of elderly and um, disabled people. Um, that money can be deposited with them, pooled with all the other money that they have in their pooled trust, hence the name pooled trust, invested and reinvested. And then that money can be used, to, in, in this case, to benefit Evelyn in any way that Evelyn feels appropriate or that her daughter does, if her daughter is the power of attorney, um, um, to benefit, to supplement um, Evelyn's care while she's in the nursing home. But the money, once it's in the pool trust, does not have to be used to pay the nursing home. And the fact that it's in the pool trust means that it's not counted um, in terms of whether uh, Evelyn can qualify for Mass Health. So she can shift her money to the pool trust, get, them, get her remaining funds below $2,000, and then qualify for Mass Health. The money could be used to supplement Evelyn's care in any way, to buy her a better wheelchair, to buy her better furniture in, in, the, in her room, to, probably, to maybe cater some meals for her if she wants other meals. If Evelyn still owns her house, the money that was transferred to the pool trust can also be used to maintain the house, to pay the taxes and the insurance, um, to do anything in short that benefits Evelyn. Now remember, once again, following Evelyn's death, Whatever is remaining in those funds will be, sub, will be subject to that mass health lien and also to a charge that the, that the pool trust would, would make regarding some percentage of the remaining assets. But the main thing is that, the, the, once again, the, the amount at which that lien is accruing will be, much, will be small in the nursing home costs, will be very small compared to what the cost would have been on private pay. This leads to one other um, suggestion regarding a strategy for Evelyn. Suppose Evelyn owned her home and simply had a small amount left in cash. Say she had $100,000. Suppose she shifted that $100,000 out to, 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 to the pool trust. The pool trust could supplement her care in any way, right? The mass health lien would only apply to the remaining pool trust uh, amount in the pool trust and to the house. Now suppose that Evelyn didn't own the home. Suppose all that Evelyn had in the world was $100,000. She could immediately shift the money to the pool trust, get her remaining assets below $2,000, and have her and her kids know that that pot of money, $100,000, would be available to supplement her care for the rest of her life. Suppose that she lived for another several years. Suppose that because of those supplements to provide for her better meals, to provide for the wheelchair, to provide for physical therapy for her while she was in the nursing home. Suppose that as a result of that, she ran out of money in the pool trust. That'd be okay. Upon her death, MassHealth would have a lien on nothing. And the result would be that, Mary's, or that Evelyn's money was used the way it should have been used, to help Evelyn to supplement her care while she was in the nursing home to make sure that Evelyn's life while she was at the nursing home was as good as it could possibly be. So the bottom line is, if you're in a situation where someone is needing to qualify for MassHealth has not done, taken the necessary steps beforehand to shield their assets, they should still look at getting qualified for MassHealth um, for a whole number of reasons in order to make the care of the senior better and also to preserve the assets for the kids, which is really what the senior typically would want. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to um, talking to you on the uh, next installment of our Fireside Chats. Thank you.